Namaste everyone and welcome to the Being Yoga Festival. My name is Ijra Trivedi and it's an honor and a pleasure to have all of you at our festival. It's been really um, a pleasure to put together with the effort of our entire team, all of who are volunteers, and with the support of so many more who've come on board at the last minute. We have an amazing lineup of speakers over the next 24 hours, and we do hope that you tune in to listen and to give. I just wanna talk a little bit about the intention of this festival. Um, what is it that inspired me and the rest of our team to really put this together? Um, it really comes as two things, I would say. The first is that in these really interesting times that we find ourselves in, the true shield that we have is our own immune systems. It's our own health. At the end, that's what's really gonna keep us safe, right? It's um, staying locked down while it's a temporary solution, it's not a permanent one. And in this particular time, when our lifestyles have been completely appended, when we, um, our normal day-to-day -day routines have been turned upside down, um, our kids are home, our offices are locked down, uh, we can't go to the gym, we can't even get into our car, in India at least. Um, and this has really led to a lot of turbulence, not just in our physical lives, but in our emotional lives, and also for many people in their spiritual lives. Uh, the, the point of this festival was to bring together an array of speakers from across the board to share some wisdom and some insight into how we can use this time to not just stay physically fit, but to stay mentally fit, emotionally fit, and spiritually fit. And also to use this time as a positive, as a positive circumstance, take this time that we have for ourselves to do something really good, not just for ourselves, but for our communities, for the environment, and for the world. That was the first purpose. And the second purpose was to give. It was to encourage people to donate. Uh, we're doing this entire festival via the Facebook Social for Good campaign in which we're encouraging everyone to just give, um, even if it's a little amount, if it's 150 rupees on our fundraiser that you will find on our Facebook page. So just, um, if you can find it in your hearts to give a little bit, we're raising money for Goonj which is a fabulous charity, which is doing a lot of work amongst migrant laborers um, and people who don't have homes like we do. Uh, they don't have food to eat. They, they're surviving on daily wages. And this is really the purpose um, of this festival is to raise funds for them. And again, I wanna thank in the very beginning, all the people who've come together to bring this together, You know, all of our yoga teachers, um, uh, Ira Yoga Wellness team members came together and gave so much of their time and their heart and their energy to bring together this festival. We've had a range of volunteers across the board. And I really feel like at a time like this, um, when we see people come together, it's, it's truly, truly inspiring. And I think that this is the seed of our human goodness beginning to blossom and beginning to spring. Um, and in, Today's opening session, I want to talk just very briefly about my own personal yoga journey. I get a lot of questions about it, asking me about what led me to become um, a yoga teacher, what led me towards yoga. Um, I had a successful career as a writer. Before I was a writer, I had a successful career um, as um, you know, a, a very short time as being a banker. I went to a, a top business school of the world and yet I chose this yoga, yoga journey. What is it that inspired me? What is it that led me in this direction? Uh, following this, I'll be sharing some very, very simple tips from yoga that can help, that can help us keep safe. These are really, really simple things that um, I myself do every day um, that I have been teaching to all of my students and I would love for um, all of our viewers today to pick up some of these very, very simple things um, that you can use in your daily lives. Because remember, our immunity and our strength is what is going to keep us safe, um, not just today, but for the immediate future and time to come. Um, and after that, we'll be taking questions. Uh, there'll be um, some 
pretty nice prizes as well if you ask some good questions. So please stick on towards the end of this broadcast for the last 20 minutes. It's 6.32 right now. So at 6.50, um, we'll be, I'll be accepting questions from all of you. And that's when we're going to be hoping that you um, answer, ask some lovely questions so we can give you some lovely prizes. So this is the agenda of the next 30 minutes. So please hang on in, on our broadcast so I can share some of my yoga journey tips and um, we can do a little bit of pranayam together and then I can take questions um, from the audience on Facebook Live. Following this, we have some really interesting speakers. We have Mr. Rajiv Malotra coming on and then we have Deva Premal, a, a Grammy nominated artist uh, with some fabulous chanting that's going to be at 7 30 so i strongly encourage you guys to tune in onto our facebook live and then tomorrow we have an entire program from 7 a.m to 7 p.m 12 hours of back to back to back lives across a variety of different segments so we're going to start with yoga um, and fitness um, we have our partners CureFit coming to do a beautiful class along with one of our teachers, Varsha. Following that, we have Simon Beaujolivier, one of the finest teachers around the world. Then we're going to go straight into spiritual spirituality with Bike Shivani, Daji, and Sadhvi Bhagwati Ji. We have a lovely section on nutrition. So for four hours, we're going to be talking about uh, tips to boost your immunity from naturopathy, from Ayurveda, from um, modern holistic sciences. And then we're going to be moving to motivation because that's what all of us need, especially since the, lo since the lockdown has been further extended. So we have uh, people like Mahesh Bhupati, Mukesh Bansal, the, form the founder of Cult Fit India's most successful um, gym, followed by Radhanath Swami, who's really a personal favorite of mine. I've known him for many, many years and he's truly inspired and motivated me um, for uh, the length of my spiritual journey. And we're gonna have a festival bonanza with Krishna Das, who's going to be doing some live kirtan for us. Um, so that's the schedule of the festival. And I really hope that you join us and you take some of this time to give to our cause. Um, now, talking about my personal yoga journey, what is it that led me to be a yoga teacher? Um, to be honest, I never thought that I would be a yoga teacher. It never actually crossed my mind. And even till today, I sometimes really wonder, um, am I really a yoga teacher? Even till today, when I step into a class, this must be, I don't know, my 500th class or my 1000th class. I don't, I've lost track completely. But even till today, I, I kind of, I kind of count my blessings that I was led down the yoga path. And I have the inclination and the motivation to actually go down this path. But how did it all start? You know, how did it all start? Did I grow up in an ashram? Definitely not. Did I grow up in a family of yoga practitioners? Definitely not. Um, did I grow up with, in a family that took um, wellness seriously? Yes. That took health seriously? Yes. That took spirituality seriously? Yes. But um, that's more normal in Indian households than abnormal, you know? So I did have that blessing, but this is not what was my entire reason for getting on to a yoga journey. Um, and I would say that even before my yoga journey began, my journey of asanas, it was the journey of meditation that began for me. Um, the time was in the 2000s, uh, in, the, in the late uh, sort of, I would say in, in, in around the first decade of the 2000s towards the end of that. And I was, um, I was searching, you know, I was a bit lost. I was in my uh, early twenties and, um, you know, I, I, there was many paths in front of me. You know, I just, I was about to graduate from a very success, very well-known business school. I've been offered a job. I, um, there was a lot of pressure being an Indian girl to get married. Um, there was, uh, you know, more, you know, more studies. There was jobs. Um, I had a career as a successful writer already, but everyone had told me that that writing is not going to lead to a successful career, but I had already begun to prove that wrong. Um, but I was still lost. I didn't really know what I wanted. You know, I didn't really know 
um, know, know who I was, you know, and, and what this, what the meaning of any of this was, you know, when I remember I was going for a wedding to Bali and I, there was, it was a huge festivity. There was, there was so much, it was one of those big fat Indian weddings and in the midst of that wedding and I was, I was having a good time. And at that point in time, I used to drink. Um, I used to, you know, I used to, yeah, I used to, I, I had stopped eating non-veg from a very, very, very young age. Um, so I think that was a little bit of a gem of my, um, uh, that was the beginning of, of, I think my spiritual journey was becoming vegetarian when I was nine. But at that wedding, I remember looking around me and wondering like, what is it that's going on here? Is this what life is about? And while I'm happy because I'm a little drunk, um, perhaps, and I'm a little tipsy, but I don't think this is what life is about, you know? And, uh, and I remember leaving the wedding and just taking a walk and there was a little meditation center. There was, it was a very, very discreet meditation center. And I just walked in and there was a meditation happening. It was a meditation with guided music. And I remember just sitting down and following that music. It was the music of a flute. And I remember it so distinctly, even till today. And following that music, um, just with my eyes closed. And that did something to me. There was something that, that some neurons of my brain that just kind of, that changed their pathways, I think. And it was as if a light went on inside my head. And um, it was, it was a very special feeling. I wouldn't call, I felt overwhelming joy or I, I felt, you know, as if I was enlightened, but there was something that happened that was, that was, um, that I wanted to come back to again and again. You know, that's all I can say. I wanted to experience that feeling over and over again. And um, I think that's actually where my yoga journey began was that meditation. Anyhow, I continued that daily meditation practice from then onwards. Every single day, I would wake up and try to just sit down with a little bit of music initially to guide me. And that's how I began. But that was the beginning of meditation. You know, some of you now may ask me, what about the yoga journey? What about the asanas? Well, the story behind that is as follows. Again, a time of early 20s, a time of being lost, a time of not really knowing what direction to take in life, whether was it, was it marriage I wanted? Was it a career that I wanted? Um, I had worked pretty hard in my life to reach where I was, you know, which was at a point where I had so many options in front of me. Um, but, but none of them really were very exciting to, for me. None of them really seemed like they were it. And more than that, I was pretty unhappy in my body. You know, um, again, as I pointed out, I was vegetarian and in the 2000s, you know, in the early 2000s, um, there was, there was, you know, that the vegetarian culture hadn't really become prominent in the U.S. So most of the vegetarian food I was eating was either um, it was it was really, really um, greasy or it had potatoes or it had cheese. And I remember just gaining so much weight and becoming so unhealthy in my body. And remember, um, an unhealthy mind or an unhealthy body will lead to a disturbed mind. It's just a mind-body connection. And it's so, so true. It's so, so true. You know, when you don't feel good in your body, you just don't feel good in my mind. And I didn't feel so good in my body. You know, I, I felt like I wasn't myself. I gained some 15 kgs and um, I just felt miserable. I didn't know what I wanted. I was kind of fat. And I really wondered, my gosh, like, is this what life is supposed to be? You know, but then I... Um, I actually remember um, just just sitting at home and my dad comes and asks me, oh, like, do you want to take a yoga class? And I said, yoga, that's so boring. You know, who wants to take a yoga class? And uh, then, uh, but then he said, well, you know, you've gained a lot of weight and nothing seems to be working. And, you know, maybe, um, you know, you should, you should think about slimming down a little bit, which was the truth. I had been... Um, going to the gym, I've been swimming, but none of it seemed to be working because 
the more I seemed to work out, the more I wanted to then eat. And it was like a very vicious cycle for me. And then, um, but then I did that yoga class and I remember what happened in that yoga class. First of all, my yoga teacher himself was a little uninspiring. He was a little bit um, chubby himself. So I thought to myself, hmm, I don't know if, if my goal can be achieved with through him. Uh, secondly, um, he was always getting angry at me because I could not touch my toes. Um, I was very inflexible from a, a, you know, a decade or plus of running. And I remember my sister used to do these classes with me and he used to always say, oh my gosh, she's so much better than you. And then the cherry on this yoga cake was that he would, in Shavasan, uh, I remember as he was making us do Shavasan, he would himself go to sleep and then start snoring. Uh, I'm not joking about this. And so I decided that this definitely cannot be, uh, this is not, yoga is not for me. And I didn't do yoga. But then when I went back to the US, I remember it was really the time that yoga was becoming quite cool. You know, we had, um, we had people like, there was Madonna doing yoga, all of these supermodels were doing yoga and they were all like flaunting a yoga body. And I remember saying that, my gosh, I want a yoga body. And I went to a yoga class and you know, guess what? The yoga class was $15 and I couldn't afford it. I literally did not go to the yoga class because it was too expensive. And so I, you know, I, I, I came back to India and I tried again because here it was definitely cheaper than it was in the US. Um, and when I tried again, this time, uh, this time, you know, I didn't, I, I was doing a search by myself and that was on Google, which is, you know, uh, Google Baba, as they say. And, uh, it was, it was Google Baba that actually led me to the place where, um, where I, I found, I found yoga. Uh, and, but that also has a little bit of a story attached to it. I remember that being a writer, there was a book that I found on my bookshelf and that book had like really good quality pictures it was really glossy and i remember thinking wow this is a really nice book and i remember googling yoga ayurveda weight loss and i came across the shivananda ashram and i happened to be in an odd circumstance going to rishikesh the next um, you know the next week with my family and so when i went to rishikesh i decided to visit this ashram and the minute i stepped into this ashram it was very different than what I thought an ashram would be. It was incredibly different. It was full of um, happy, smiling, fit people. It was, um, it didn't seem like this morose, serious place that I had that I thought that ashrams were going to be. And it was, it was really, it was really beautiful. You know, it was, it was a place that I wanted to be. And so I checked myself in for 10 days and I learned about the yoga life, not just about yoga asanas, but I learned about what a yoga life was what a yogic diet was, what yogic behavior was. And also I learned about asana. I learned that asana wasn't about being flexible or touching my toes. It was about a, an internal journey. And that was, that went really, really well with what I had, what I, what, you know, what was parallelly going on in my meditation practice. So the meditation practice and the yoga practice came together. And then that was just the beginning. And since then it's been a journey that has been, um, that has been ongoing and it's always ongoing, you know, it's always ongoing. That's what the yoga journey is. It doesn't really stop till the day you die. And even then, once you die, um, it probably goes on until, unless you get, unless you get realized, you know, but we'll be talking a little bit more about yoga and Ayurveda with our next speaker. Before I get to questions, I'm going to take just a few minutes to talk about the two practices that everyone should be doing right now. So switching gears a little bit to what it is that we should be doing during these um, these times to keep ourselves healthy. Um, and that is the practice of pranayam, okay? Pranayam keeps our respiratory systems really strong and everyone should be doing this. This is going to be your shield, right? Because COVID-19 really affects your respiratory system. So remember, two practices, Kapalabhati, the stomach pumping exercise, and then the Anilom Vilom, the alternate nostril breathing. So a quick recap of both of these in two minutes each, and then you can watch this video, um, or we have, I have many other videos that you can watch that demonstrate these practices, but these are the two practices that everyone should be doing. 
and do them as soon as you wake up in the morning. You know what I do, and this is my personal practice, the minute I wake up in my bed, I sit down in my bed for meditation, and then right after I finish my meditation practice, I actually do my pranayam. So in this way, it doesn't get skipped, you know? And in between, if I stimulate my, um, stimulate my bowel movements or my digestion, I actually, um, you know, go into the, into the restroom and then come back and finish my practice. So I really recommend that you do this. And if you do it, the first thing that you wake up before you look at your phone, before you check WhatsApp, before you, um, you know, before you go and talk to your husband or your children or your parents, then you're never going to skip it. First practice, Kapal Pati. You're pumping your lower abdomen. So you're sitting up straight with your back straight, your spine straight. Keep your hands in chin mudra on your knees. And remember that you're just trying to pump with your abdomen. You can take your finger and place it underneath your nose. So it goes something like this. So you're really pushing the air out of your nostrils. You're pumping your stomach in and the inhalation is automatic. Okay, so it's something again like this. You, the air comes out and then the inhalation happens all by itself really comfortably and you know you're not breathing in like this it's a very gentle movement let me demonstrate the whole practice so you see i'm pumping but my chest is not moving it's just my lower abdomen the second practice this is a cleansing practice and now we move on to the actual pranayam which is the anilom vilom we keep the, the hand the right hand in vishnu mudra with these two fingers on the palm, the other two fingers up, we place them on the nose, the thumb on the right nostril, other two fingers on the other nostril, and then you close the right nostril, inhaling from the left, a slow controlled breath, then you close both nostrils, retaining the breath, and then you exhale from the left, keeping the other nostril shut. Then we inhale from the right, retain the breath, and exhale from the left, keeping the right closed. Inhale from the right, keeping both the nostrils closed, and then exhale from the right keeping the left nostril closed. Inhale from the right, close both nostrils, and exhale from the left, keeping the, the right nostril closed. And you can actually include a ratio here. So when you're inhaling, you're inhaling slowly on four counts. You can retain the breath as you count to 16. And when you exhale, Try to slowly exhale as you count to eight. So the exhalation is double the inhalation. So try to follow that ratio, or you can even begin simply by inhaling on four counts, retaining the breath on four, and exhaling on four. So these are the two practices that are going to keep you safe during COVID-19. Um, and I really recommend that you do this as soon as you wake up in the morning. You can have a glass of water before you practice this. This will help you if you're having bloating, if you're having a little bit of constipation, the Kapala Bhati will get rid of all of that immediately. This is a beautiful way to clear up, clear up your, your stomach. So again, practice these two pranayams for really good respiratory health. I feel like the government should make it mandatory. And you know what? It may, it may just, you never know. So before it makes it mandatory, I suggest that you guys start practicing. And now we have nine more minutes left to this broadcast. So I'll be taking questions. So please um, send me questions on the Facebook, Facebook feed. Remember, you can win some really exciting prizes if you ask some good questions. And um, also, I would, it would be our honor and pleasure if you can give on this broadcast. If you're not signing in via Facebook, then you, if you're, signing into one of our various channels, then you can go on to our website, beingyogafestival.org to give a donation. So now I'm just checking the Facebook stream to see what the questions are. 
um, looking forward to this. All right. Um, so Millie Pandit is asking, how do you make yoga a habit? So how do you make yoga a habit? How to make anything a habit? Be consistent with it. This is the way that you're really going to do this. Um, and there's two ways of two ways in my experience of making a good habit. The first is to attach yoga to another habit that you have. So if the other habit is that when I wake up, I go for a morning walk, then attach yoga to that habit. So if you attach one habit to another habit, you're going to get it done. For example, I'm going to do mouthwash and I'm going to attach it to brushing my teeth. So after I finish brushing, I will immediately do mouthwash and that becomes a habit. Um, so try and try and make it a habit and also track it. Track if you want to make yoga a habit, then track it and write it down, note it down. You know, writing something down and visually seeing it. Have I done yoga every day? Check mark, even if it's just a note on your phone. This will give you motivation. You know, the third tip is have a yoga buddy. Have someone who can hold you accountable. You know, even if it's just your mom, even if it's your brother or your sister, or if it's a friend, you know, if you find that partner to make you accountable, that's really going to help. Um, now, um, we have um, another question by Gotham Sharma. I'm a parent of two, trying every step to take my first step to this yoga journey. Suggest basic yoga steps and how to start. Um, this is a really good question, Gotham, and this is a question that I think a lot of people have, right? Because so many of us do have busy lives. We don't have lives that allow us to just spend hours every day in our yoga practice. Um, so I would say that, you know, um, keep it simple. You know, don't try and begin an hour and a half of yoga every single day. It's going to be really tough for you. Begin by saying, I'm going to do 15 minutes or 20 minutes of yoga every day, or maybe something as simple like, simple as I'm going to just do, um, I'm going to do yoga classes twice or thrice a week. Joining a yoga class is a beautiful way. And now, especially, you know, you get, you have so many ways of doing it. You know, we at Your Yoga Wellness offer yoga classes. Um, we have three yoga classes that we do every single day. Um, you're welcome to come to ours. But there's now, you know, the world, the virtual world, we're holding a yoga summit online, a you know, yoga festival. So um, you, there's so much, so much content there, you know. Um, so Gotham, there are no excuses. You know, there are no excuses to do yoga anymore. So please definitely get on your mat, even if it's for 15 or 20 minutes a day. Um, let's see, there's a question by uh, Padmaja Narendran. What is the best time to do these, um, to do these breath exercises? Um, well, I would say the best time to do these breath exercises is, is in the morning. First thing in the morning on an empty stomach, as I told you, I do these as soon as I wake up in the morning. You know, that's when I, re that's when I practice yoga, uh, practice my pranayam. So even if I, you know, I try to practice yoga seven days a week, but sometimes I miss my asana practice. Um, but pranayam and meditation, I try not to miss those ever. And that's because I do it first thing in the morning. So this is always the best time. But if it's busy for you in the morning, if you have kids that you have to send to school, if you've got a small child, then do it in the evening, you know, around, um, around dusk is a good time. So between six and seven, you know, you do it and then you can have your dinner about half an hour later. Usually at this time you have a fairly empty stomach. So it's good to do it when your stomach is, um, is, is empty. We have a question by Ananya Malotra. How do we inspire ourselves to co consistently work on our goals with the help of yoga, especially during the lock lo the lockdown? That's a wonderful question, Ananya. Um, you know, yoga is a discipline. You know, it's not just a discipline of the body. It's a discipline of the mind more than anything else. And I have found in my personal life that when I, when I practice asana, when I practice yoga, as I'm disciplining my body, I'm actually disciplining my mind. So anything that I want to do, which is mental, it becomes easier for me. And able to focus and concentrate better. I'm able to do everything in a much more disciplined way. Let me tell you, the day that you start by doing yoga in the morning, that day is 
a much more different day than when you don't do yoga in the morning. You know, try it. Try, look at two days. Begin one day with yoga and then um, don't do yoga the next day. But everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our opening, opening of the festival. Thank you so much for joining me. Just give us two minutes to come back on with Rajiv Malotra. He's an incredibly inspiring person. Um, he's got an immense, immense depth and breadth of knowledge on, um, on some beautiful subjects. And I can't wait to hear him speak about um, what the Vedas have to say about the pandemic. What's the view on that amongst many other really interesting um, questions he's going to be answering for us. So just hold on two more minutes and we're gonna be right back live on Facebook. 